Hello everybody, Jerome Wright here and um, once again you're joining me on my YouTube channel. As you can see from this image, I have a, um, <clears throat> a set of our planetary setup here in our solar system, okay? And through my paranormal experience and encounter, as you know, who's, um, the people that's been following me know that I create some pretty interesting videos, okay? Um, um, here in this video, I'm going to give you another reality check and what is happening with our space and within our solar system okay um in our planetary setup here we have uh, beginning back out on the uh, on the end here we have pluto we have neptune we have uranus we have saturn we have jupiter we have mars and then we have earth and then going in a little closer towards the sun we have mercury and then venus people there's a serious plot problem with this planetary setup um, that it actually tells us and I'm surprised and you must say to yourself why hasn't scientists figured this out why is Jerome Wright claiming to have this paranormal experience and encounter keep creating these videos with a reality that science does not have to be involved in to authenticate um, people it's, it's, it's time for us to wake up this is, in this video, what I'm going to be discussing, and I'm hopefully I'm going to make a catchy title as well too, is that do you realize that each one of these planets, except for Mercury and and um, and Venus, have moons? Do you realize that there is a problem with that? Do you realize that no one has even I don't know if they even discussed the possibility of what happened to Mercury and and um and um and Venus moons. You have to assume that all of our other planets in our solar system have moons, some of them have multiple moons, except for Mercury and Venus. Now I keep wanting to say Mars, that's why I hesitate. But people you have to assume that something happened to those moons. You have to assume that these planets has moons and they disappeared. Now, we can state that their moons, through the energy of the sun and the chemistry of the sun, were destroyed and sent off somewhere in space in bitacles and parts, which is a plausible scenario. But this morning, when I, I woke up, I said to myself, and um, as you know, too, by the way, people, that our moon is, is, is being pushed away a few inches every other day from our planet. So it's very plausible that, and I believe that this chemistry is happening through, I believe that our planet's atmosphere is growing, meaning that it's being pushed off through the emissions off the core of our planet, which is causing for that chemistry to push our a moon a few inches away. So I'm stating that for the few inches that our moon is being pushed away from our planet on a constant basis, on a consistent basis, then it is due to the emitted matter that is actually causing for the expansion of our planet's atmosphere being pushed out. And it's my position through that scenario that ultimately our planet's atmosphere will erupt, meaning that it would be like a, a balloon that you overinflate, blowing and blowing, and you keep blowing and blowing until finally it explodes. And this is what I believe the case is with our atmosphere that I have actually experienced, which is a very logical scenario. However, it still does not arrive at what happens with these planets' moons. Now, we have to I mean, there's no evidence of these moons being, unless you want to actually say what well, pieces of these moons can be in the asteroid belt. And this is where, I mean, they erupted for being too close to the sun and they were destroyed out and sent down. I mean, this is a very logical scenario. And plus on top of that, science has not even went there with that, but I have that. But I'm going to come up with something that, that's, that's entirely even different and even more plausible than that scenario which I've actually created. 
Both of Mercury and Venus have gaping holes in their atmosphere, which I stated in my first scenario, given that in discretion, description, that their atmosphere is erupted by being overflated by emitted matter off the core of these planets. Cores. Like overinflating a balloon. And the chemistry from that happening is through the chemistry between and the interactions between the sun and any given planet, which is actually happening to our world as well. I'm stating now that there is something else that actually happens in this scenario that has to be looked at as being a reality. I'm stating that at some point or another, between the interactive, the, radi the, the radioactive chemistry, where's my sun at here? I done enlarged this to the point that where we can't see our sun. So let me take this back down some. There's our sun right there. I took the sun out of the equation. There's our sun right there. That the sun's energy is everly increasing. I'm looking at these planets as eggs being thawed out, as the sun being an incubator, and this radioactive chemistry is causing for the cores of these planets to heat up, and it's actually spawning life to um, to um, sp spawning life to, um, to 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 into existence based on the proximity and the distance of that and the interaction with the chemistry with the sun. So I'm stating that um, uh, Mercury and Venus already had life at one point or another. Earth is now current and then so forth and so with as this radioactive chemistry of the sun is going out. I'm also accusing NASA of actually seeding or planting life on Mars right now as it is with what our ancestors been doing all along. Um, beginning with over here with um, with Mercury, it's my position that our ancestors hopped over to Venus in the same form that we are now hopping, our NASA is hopping over to Mars. So as these planets are being spawned into life and subsequently dissolved of their life by the sun, the sun giveth and the sun taketh away, our ancestors are planet hopping. Not in the form of the physical sense, but it's my position that our ancestors are sending their these these extremophiles, these extremophile microorganisms, which carries the information to help life create alone on the next world. And I have the scenario for that as well, too. However, because I'm going through this genuine experience and encounter, let me remind you. It's my position that we first came from Venus. Well, actually, I'm sorry, from Mercury. We went on to Venus, and now we exist on Earth. In the future, as Mars is spawned to life and comes into acquiring its atmosphere, then life forms will be on Mars as well. And those life forms will contain information based on that of which NASA is sending secretly to Mars right now. Eventually, as that planet evolved into the scenario of what we are enjoying today on our world and this global warming and this climate change and extinction runs its course then the next planet in order will that this these these existences of beings will inhabit it or start to inhabit or colonize the next world not in the sense of a physical sense where they're physically walking. It will take millions upon millions of years for those extremophiles which are carrying the DNA and the information and the keys to the evolution of life, of creating this life, as we are doing now, is secretly doing through ancient rooted religion and royalty, which has the keys to this stuff. 
what is happening is going to continue to keep happening as they evolve from one planet to the next. And that's where these gaps are in history, in ancient history. But anyway, this is not what I'm talking about here in this video. I just had plenty of time, so I just wanted to throw that in there. What I'm stating is happening right now, what happened to their moons, is that I believe that there is a breakdown in the magnetic fields, the gravity hold, the, the gravitational hold, the ability for a planet to hold its moon at a bay, or push it, or should I say no, to hold the moon at a bay at a point in the time between the evolution of that world and the sun. Its moons are remanded or condemned to that planet, which means that Mercury moon caused that gaping hole in its side by collapsing like an asteroid or like a meteor or like a meteorite. It collided with that world and as a result blew a hole clean ruptured the atmosphere of the planet it's my position that we we can apply the same scenario to venus because people from here on back are moons these two planets are the only two planets in our solar system that do not have moons. And there is no evidence of where they have went. Either scenario that I present has to be taken into reality. It's my position. That if these two planets, which I'm suggesting in a logical scenario, lost the ability to hold their moons off at bay, then those moons, after these planets, became deactivated by the chemistry of the sun, lost their ability to hold their moon off. And therefore, that moon, like, oh, let me give you a better scenario. A satellite losing its orbit or its ability to stay in orbit with its planet falls back to the world. Now, this in a real sense happens today. Objects in orbit with our world, man-made objects set into space, falling back to our planet after it loses its orbit or its ability to stay in orbit. People, there are no moons here. Now, let's go to Earth. Imagine what I'm stating as being true. An Earth moon. Once the sun, let's say demagnetized, if that's the proper thing to say, or affects our world. Let's say this way, because I'm not a scientist. I'm not going to pretend to be. I'm just having a genuine experience and encounter and sharing my experience. Let's just say that our world loses its ability. Our moon, which is here. Our world loses its ability to hold our moon at bay. Light switch shuts down on the core. Earth's moon is a satellite in a sense. That moon falls to that world. You even see, I'm going to have to let this go, even see pictures of where in ancient I mean ancient Renaissance paintings where there is a man standing there or in space like a god figure holding, like if he's holding the moon away from or the sun away from earth standing in between or pushing either that or a moon away people you get the picture i'm going to put more in writing i'm going to let this video go there okay i'm going to stop there 
But it's my position that it's very likely that the moons to those planets collided with those worlds and destroyed them. Thank you.